Sarah and Gianni from Walk Off the Earth. Hello. Hello, Amy. Where about are you guys? We're in Costa Rica in the Guanacaste region. We like to come down here to to do writing and recording video shoots and stuff. So we try to try to break up the winter and get we get a lot of work done down here. It's a good vibe. Do you always choose Costa Rica or do you like to shake it up a bit? Or is there just something about Costa Rica that, you know, gets the uh, creative flow going? We used to go to L.A. We did that for a few years, but this year we came here and it's just there's something so magical about this place and so inspiring. So we have come back here a couple of times yeah. over the last couple of years. Well, that's amazing. I hope you guys are enjoying your time. We're talking today because you've got a new single out and it is a jammer. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. My stupid heart. It is definitely a becoming a favorite on TikTok. It's crazy the the support from the TikTok community from the song. Ever since we started posting it, we posted it probably a couple months before we even dropped it, and it just really struck a chord. Just so many videos and so many people writing us and all around the world listening to the song, and we're we're so grateful and blown away by all the support. There's something about new social media platform too that can be really exciting, but maybe, you know, being that, you know, it, it's, it really is relatively new. Is this something that you're just kind of delving into being that, you know, it's another way to reach your fans? Yeah. I mean, since we kind of started doing, you know, creating content and creating stuff for people to watch, we, we knew that it was going to be kind of the way of the future. And through the last 10 years, we've adjusted to all the different platforms. So it definitely takes a second to kind of get used to it. You know, when they come out with something new that everybody ends up using and falling in love with. And Johnny is like the research guy. He'll come downstairs in the morning and be like, I did a bunch of research last night. And here's what we need to do, you so know, to like help make these videos get out to people and blah, blah, blah. But it, I mean, we love creating content. We always have. It's just fun. It's just fun to be on there making short clips and goofy things and like weird ideas that we have we enjoy doing it and i think you have to be authentic on those apps so it's like this is what we like to do and people like it so it works so as long as you're not trying to force force yourself into like these new things that are happening the people on these apps they invested in like the different things that are happening on the apps they know what's real and what's authentic and what's not we just do what we like to do and it and it worked, so we're happy. Yeah. It's a change from our long form content too, because for so many years it was full length videos and full length content. And it's it's actually really fun and for us as artists to do something that's 15 seconds to a minute long and be like, okay, that's done. Like, let's move on to the next idea. It allows us to actually create a lot more content and be a lot more creative and fun with it. You had said that about authenticity as well. It's really important to be authentic. And whether that's in your music or whether that's how you come across to your fans, I think that your fans would absolutely say that that's one thing about the band. You stay true to your music that you love making. And this new single just totally walk off the earth song. So big congratulations on that one. I want to know a little bit how there was a release with Love on it as well. How did you get involved with that collaboration? It was a really weird situation. Sarah and I were in LA because we were playing the Kimmel show about a month ago and we were at hotel lobby bar and he actually <laughs> walked in and he was like oh he like recognized us I recognized him Sarah Sarah didn't recognize him at first and we kind of just met each other and started talking he's like congratulations on the new song he's like I really love it he's like and he he brought up the fact that we were doing an open verse he's like oh maybe I'll do an open verse and we were like we would love that dude but we didn't think he was going to do it a couple days later his manager reached out to our manager was like he made an open verse so he posted it and we were blown away by it and we're like would he be down to be on another version and they were like absolutely crazy, inviting but... yourself onto somebody else's song right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was this like crazy fate moment. Randomly met him at a bar in LA. It's just a total random run in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, we're fans of his work. Like we were absolutely ecstatic. So it was great. Cool. Kind of one of the cool things about the music world too is it's a little incestuous where you never know who you're going to meet and how you're going to meet and all of those different avenues. So that's really cool. Saw the video with the kids covering that song. Amazing. Were they down for that? <laughs> I don't so think stuck. anyone has seen any other video other than that video <laughs> so big yeah. no they i mean romeo he's our youngest he has like a real true heart passion for music the other kids 
as well. They've been surrounded by music their whole lives. We've brought them on tour since they were, you know, they were growing inside of my belly. So they're very interested in that realm. And it just happened so naturally. Because we work on songs for months, right, before they come out. They were always in the, in the living room, like playing it right from the like, inception of the song to like as the recording's happening. They're always hearing the song. So Romeo especially is always singing the songs. And one day we're like, he knows all the lyrics perfectly. And he's like in perfect pitch. Like yeah. Giorgio is a really good drummer. They all do piano. So we were like, I wonder if we just kind of like put together a jam session and have yeah. the kids play the song and see what happens. And then we did it one day and we finished it and they were like, we can do it better. Dada, like, we can do it better. So they have like this passion to make things really great. So we're like, all right, we'll keep practicing. So they kept practicing and then like, okay, we're ready. And like, we just, we filmed that, like maybe did like 10 takes. We knew it was good, but we didn't think it was going to blow up the way it has. Yeah. Obviously it has 80 million views, but there's reposts all over the world. Like every day I'm on TikTok or Instagram and I see someone else that posted it. It has like 50 million views. So we're trying to count all the views, but we think it has over like 200 million views or something. It's crazy. <laughs> I think they're more recognizable than us now like when we walk through the airport people will be like Romeo yeah. they don't even know who we are so it's funny man. I mean if they grow up and decide to take the uh, pathway to music professionally spoken to uh, musicians before and they were like oh you know I don't know what would you say to your kids if they were like you know mom dad we want to uh, do music professionally good question it would be a good position for us to be in because we know the industry so well and we are constantly educating ourselves on how it's changing because it will be much different you know 10 years from now and 15 years from now and we're always going to be interested in it but at the same time in our minds it's like well maybe you should become an entertainment lawyer because like <laughs> we know how much money those people are making you know <laughs> well my parents were very supportive his parents were a little conservative, but also very supportive of his music. And I think in the end, no matter what they decide to do, it's just, we're just going to support that. In the meantime, why not give them this experience? They're passionate about it and they want to do it. And it's a, it's another form of education, really. They're growing up in a society, in a world that's full of social media. So if we can make them conscious of that, you know, I think a lot of people are spending a lot of time on social media and the internet with no purpose. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice to be like, well, this is your world and we're going to have limits on it, but also let's create some fun stuff that people will enjoy and, and, and appreciate and not just strain their brains while you're watching it. <laughs> I know. I feel like sometimes social media can turn into like the equivalent of opening the refrigerator door, looking for food, even though you're not hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. Or me when you don't know how to cook. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> Yeah. I know that the single one million streams in 72 hours is yeah. <laughs> that's that's insane, right? Do you uh, say that that was probably the biggest start of a song for you? A hundred percent. We've had a lot of success in our career and like a lot of songs do really well and still doing well. But this is by far our biggest song that we've ever released the fastest growing and we've just heard from our team in China and like it's, a, it's doing really well in China. It's like the number two most streamed uh, North American artist over there right now. So there's some pretty crazy things and it's opening a lot of doors. Like that, that was our first late night performance, Jimmy Kimmel in our, in our whole careers. So, you know, lots of other artists are reaching out to us now wanting to do collaboration. Like it's crazy. We're here for it. Glad to hear that you're here for it because we're here for it too. June 3rd, you're going to be at Budweiser stage in Toronto and we are stoked to see you. Correct. Yes, we are so excited for that show. We played Bud stage for the first time last year. It was absolutely unforgettable. Magical. The only thing I have to say, though, is for people to get their tickets now, because this show is selling much, much faster than it did last year. We're going to have all kinds of limited edition merch. It's the 10 year anniversary of our first full length studio album. We have so many fun, cool tricks up our sleeve for this show. To all the fans out there, get your tickets now because we want every single fan at that show. We want to party. We want to celebrate and just have another unforgettable night like we did last year. So excited. Sure. Your tweet that said that you've got some surprises at the show and I'm like, hmm, what could that be? Yeah. I won't press, I won't press. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll let you get back to paradise. We promise we are going to bring some of this sunshine back with us. Yeah. We get home in a couple, like two and a half weeks. We're bringing this home with us. Gonna hold you to that. <laughs> All right, guys, enjoy. So good speaking with you. Thanks you for your too, support, Amy. Amy. 1075 Cool FM.